Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack 2023 Fantasy Football Running Back Sleeper Preview. I'm joined by my buddy Dylan Clemens here. How are you doing today, man? Good, man. Good. Beautiful Sunday here. A little jealous that you got out on the golf course today, but I'll make do. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was hot, but it was definitely worth it here. Awesome. Uh, yeah, a good day on the golf course. Yeah, I can't beat that. Um, but today we are going to be talking a little bit of running backs here, um, you know, especially when it comes to your redraft leagues. I feel like this is where the core of your team is built. Um, a lot of dynasty leagues, you know, you build kind of quarterback receiver, but without those mm -hmm. running backs in a redraft league, it's going to be really tough to, to win. Um, and one of the best things you can do is, you know, grab those running backs that you get outside of the top five, six, seven rounds that can be league winners for you. Um, so let's not waste a lot of time here. Um, before we get started, make sure you guys like the video, hit subscribe so you can see more content like this. Um, head on over to fantasy six pack.net slash plans, become an all access member there. Um, you're gonna get like cheat sheets for like our, our betting stuff, DFS. Uh, we got uh, some of the most accurate rankers for football and basketball in the fantasy pros contest the last few years. And then best of all, you get access to the Discord channel um, where our riders like me and Dylan are in there. We can answer your yep. questions for your fantasy team specifically. Um, so yeah, head on over there, become a member. Um, and that being said, let's get going here. So who is your number one running back sleeper this year? It's Jamal Williams, man. I just feel like he's totally underrated. I get it that he there's going to be negative regression that comes with him and his 17 touchdowns last year. But Alvin Kamara has most likely a suspension looming. I know some stuff came out like he, there's going to be zero jail time, but that hasn't stopped the NFL from suspending players before like Zeke. Um, so I think Jamal Williams is going to step into a big role, at least for the, the first big part of the season. I think they're going to ease rookie Kendra Miller into the offense. Um, and then even when Kamara comes back, man, Jamal Williams and AK kind of complement one another. So I think they could both coincide to similar to what we saw with Kamara and Mark Ingram when those two guys pretty sure finished around top 24 backs each. Um, Jamal, he should be a little bit more involved in the passing game, especially when AK, if he is suspended. Um, I just think he's being completely undervalued, man, going as RB42, an underdog ADP. And to me, he has top 24 upside in my mind in redraft, and I think he's going to absolutely smash running back 42. Yeah, I mean, I think RB42, that he's easily going to finish ahead of that. Yeah. Um, you know, Kendra Miller, he is kind of one of my guys that were rookies, uh, but he's a guy that I definitely like more in like years two and year three. Um, I do think that when you're looking down the road, I think he's a guy that can pretty much project to be like a guy that's similar to Jamal Williams, but just does everything a little bit better. Um, but Jamal Williams is a guy that like the last what three years now, he's outperformed his ADP by quite a bit. The guy just, he football teams love him. It seems like he's one of the best character yep. guys. And like, that's the kind of thing that you don't really see on like a stat sheet is like the high character guys. And he just seems like he's a guy that everybody loves to have in the locker room. And those are the types of guys that coaches like to play. And you saw that last year, you know, 17 touchdowns, even if he has the regression back to like nine or 10, he's still going to easily be a top 30 running back yep. uh, pretty easily there. I agree. All right. Well, let's move on to our next running back here. Um, and this is a guy that I like quite a bit here. Um, who is your next sleeper here? We got Samash AP Ryan here, Jordan, and I just feel like he's walking into a really good situation with Sean Payton as his coach. It's like, I feel like all Payton had to do was call him up and be like, hey, man, you see how I use my running backs in New Orleans? You can get over here because I'm going to use you. And he, we saw him when he filled in with Joe Mixon. P. Ryan has top 24 upside weekly if it's his backfield. Mm -hmm. Even if Javante Williams comes out healthy, like we've been hearing good reports, I don't necessarily believe them that he's going to be 100% ready to go um, week one. But yeah, if he's not, man, or even if he is, P. Ryan still has solid value in my eyes, and he's another guy that's going entirely too late as RB35. So he's a sleeper in my mind, and if Javante misses any time, I, he has at least mid tier RB two upside weekly for me. Yeah. I think like if you're going to go like a zero running back or like a one running back build, I think he's like the type of guy that you want to supplant like the back end of your running back room with. Uh, Cause he's a guy that you can get clear down in the thirties that like very realistically, like you said, like Javante Williams, even if he's ready for week one, he's probably not going to be a hundred percent. Like it's yep. going to be a, a process easing him back in kind of similar. It's like what I expect from like Brees Hall up in New York this year, kind of a similar thing where, even if they're ready, they're not getting that 100% workload right away. 
Um, and then Samaj P. Ryan, like you said, like we've seen what Sean Payton can do with his running backs historically. I think that he's a really good bet this year. Um, anything else you want to add on P. Ryan there? No, man, I think we're good. I think we can go ahead and move on to my first rookie on this list. Yes. This probably made you happy, and that's yes, – yes. I'm a Bears fan, man, so this is a little bit of a homer pick. But it's Roshan Johnson. But, Jordan, let me tell you, last year I didn't watch a lot of college football outside of the Fighting Illini because that's my team. Mm -hmm. But when I heard about B. John Robinson, I was all about wanting to watch Texas. Yeah. But when I turned on Texas, B. John looked good like I thought he was going to. But every time I watched, man, it was always Roshan who was breaking off a run, catching a pass out of the backfield, catching a wheel route out of the backfield, looking like a stud as well. So when the Bears drafted him, I was ecstatic. Everything I'm reading, man, he's going to be the best pass blocking running back on the roster already day one. So that's going to give him a nice solid third, third down roll, in my opinion, from the get-go. Khalil Herbert and Deonta Foreman are going to lead this backfield in touches for the first half of the season, most likely. Um, but I think Roshan is more talented than both of these backs, and I think he's going to show that towards this, the back half of the season and could be a league winner, and the Bears were the run-heaviest team in the NFL last season. I do expect them to throw more and to see an, up, yeah, see an uptick in pass attempts, but, man, Roshan, and especially where he's going at RB48, there's no reason why you can't take a late stab at him in your drafts. I, yeah, I feel like it's very similar, like in terms of like his usage to Khalil Herbert's last year. We're like, man, if that guy could just get a full time role, like he is going to mm -hmm. go off because a little bit, like the little flashes we see here and there, like you can see the talent. Um, yep. And like another good part about uh, Roshan is like, just even with the talent, how much talent he has, he's not coming into the league with a lot of carries. Like he's not a lot of wear on those tires. Um, he should be able to have, you know, closer to like a five, six year window for a winner. Right. Yep. That, that, that's good a point. Very good point right there. Um, so yeah, like, I'm, I'm intrigued to see how this backfield plays out. I, I do like Deontay form in there, you know, Khalil Herbert and like the limited little bit we've got, you know, he's been great. Um, so I'm intrigued to see how this backfield plays out, but I, I do think yeah. that Roshan Johnson's the guy, and I think it'll be like a little bit of a secondary by what by low window, just because like you said, this, the start half, the first half of the year, it's going to be Herbert and Foreman. Yep. So I think there's going to be uh, owners that kind of panic and they're like, all right, I just need somebody that's going to contribute. And that's when you go grab him in the redraft leagues. And then you have a guy for the second half of the year. Um, kind of like a like a Jeremy Hill. That's a well name from way back in the day, but kind of comes. Jeremy up, Hill, I like the name half, drop. Second like half it. of the first or second half of his first season comes in, he's a league winner for you. I could see like a similar path to that. Sure. Um, all right, uh, moving on. This uh, next guy we got here, um, he's another one in the backfield. I'm very intrigued to watch. Who is your number four sleeper? Yeah, man, it's James Cook, and this might su surprise some people because he's not sure. necessarily thought of as more than a passing down guy, man. But that is his defined role. And when he was running the ball, man, he had the he was second in true yards per carry, third in yards per touch, and first in breakaway run rate, all per um playerprofiler.com, man. So when he gets the ball in his hand, Jordan, he's explosive. Mm -hmm. His only competition really is Damian Harris, which I don't want to totally completely disperse Damian Harris's name because he's gonna have a role too. He's gonna be the For red sure. zone back. But like we've seen in previous years, we've seen kind of Josh Allen kind of play that role as the red zone back. Maybe that changes this year because we've heard we'll through see. Allen and the media and, yeah, through the media that Allen needs to relax on the running a bit and he needs to check the ball down and maybe get the ball more to his running backs. So that maybe that helps Damian Harris, but him checking the ball down, that's going to help James Cook. And you know they want to use them, Jordan. You know they want to use him, Jordan. He was was he a borderline first round pick or early He's second, second round? Second rounder, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now okay. He went to the 40s, yeah. Yeah, but that's that's even good draft capital there, that's man. A so first that, rounder for a running back, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's great stuff. So yeah, I'm in on James Cook, especially where he's going. Like, that's all about RB thirty, man. That's great value for me. He's going to smash that number. Like, I think that he's going to challenge for 1,200 all-purpose yards this year. I, oh, I don't think it, I don't think it'll necessarily be 1,000 rushing yards, but I think it could be eight to 900 rushing yards and another three to 400 uh, through the air there. Um, it, it's tough. With Josh Allen, man, I mean, on one hand, I could see how they want to have him run less. But if I remember right, when he got hurt last year, it was on a throw. Like, it wasn't even running yeah, when he hurt his right. elbow. So it's kind of just like he's built – he's not like a, like a Jalen Hurts. Like, he's – 
he's a big dude. I don't think that yes. the running is necessarily going to be as much of a detriment to him long term. Um, but I do think that they are going to want to find ways to get other people involved. And James Cook is a, the guy that's the most explosive guy there. I think Damon Harris will be better than Singletary is. Um, but I think that the development we'll see from Cook this year will be will be yep. a bigger jump. So I think that Cook's going to have a big year this year. Like I said, I think 1,200 yards, eight to nine total touchdowns. I, I think he's going to be RB30. He's going to smash that. Idea. I would love he'll that. He'll be an yeah. easy RB2. Yeah. Um, and then this last guy here, this is one where we kind of disagree a little bit here, but who is your last sleeper you want to talk about here at the running back position? I'm kind of digging Elijah Mitchell here, Jordan. Okay. I think he's an elite handcuff at the least to CMC. When mm-hmm. they were both on the field together, I know it was a small sample size because Elijah Mitchell's dealt with injuries his first two seasons. So it was only three weeks, but he out carried CMC actually in weeks 10 and 11. He's extremely efficient on the ground, averaging 6.2 yards per carry and 4.7 the previous year. Um, I, he's good. He's a good fit in this offense. And the number one point I want to make is this team is going to end up in the playoffs. And I think they want to save CMC a bit for the playoffs. So it, if it's more of like a 55-45 split, I think Elijah Mitchell can have value there, especially where he's going in drafts as RB41. Yeah, I, I could see that. I just the only thing for me is that just with CMC there, I don't know how much room is going to be there unless there's an injury. Um, because even outside of CMC, you know, you look around, you got George Kittle, Brandon IU, Debo Samuel. Like mm-hmm. It's a it's a talented roster, and like really they, with it, the one thing is, you know, Shanahan is one of the best offensive coaches in the game. So if there's anybody that's going to be able to find a way to have two running backs be fantasy relevant, it is him. Um, I just I just don't know how much work there's going to be there until there is, you know, hopefully not, but unless there is a CMC injury. Uh, but that being said, like you mentioned, down the stretch, he did out carry him. I think in the fantasy playoffs, uh, Mitchell was a double-digit player both weeks there in terms of fantasy production. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a little bit of risky here, but another great zero running back target here. Like These are the type of guys that if you do only grab like one running back or you punt the running back position earlier, these are the types of guys that you grab because all it takes is one little thing to happen, and then they're stepping yep. in RB1 role and one of the better offenses in the league. Yep, exactly. And then, Jordan, I wanted to flip the script a little bit here and come at you with, with you being the dynasty guy, I'm curious your thoughts on who your number one redraft uh, running back is and how if he's going to make a huge impact this year. And I think I know who you're going to say here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no reason to get cute here. It's going to be B. John Robinson. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's, I mean, the best running back prospect we've had in the last couple of drafts. I mean, the only only guy that's even been close to him, I would say, is Jonathan Taylor. And I still think B. John's a level or two above where he is as a prospect. Uh, you know, going to be playing for Arthur Smith, the coach that was the offensive coordinator of the Derrick Henry prime years there. Um, you look on the outside there, they got Kyle Pitts, Drake London. Um, I think yeah. uh, I think Ritter is going to be one of the bigger sleepers for quarterbacks this year. Um, I'm snatching him up everywhere that can. Just because, I mean, like the, the weapons he has, I think that Ritter yeah. is going to be the guy that everybody wants Jordan Love to be this year. Um, maybe that's a little bit of a hot take there, but that's kind of the way I'm leaning. So, yeah, I'm, I'm in right on now. that one there. But, yeah, I think he's going to have a big role. I mean, he's going to catch the ball. He's going to be the goal line guy. Um, I would be shocked if he doesn't finish as a top 12 running back. I think injury is the only way that doesn't happen. Would you take him in, let's say, let's just make it easy. Would you take him in the first round of redraft leagues? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I think up to that point, end of the probably first. around after the big wide receivers and a few, and like CMC and maybe one or, and Eckler. But I think then after that, for Eckler, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely fair game there. Yeah, but... That'll do it for our show today here. Like I said, make sure you are liking the video, uh, subscribe to the channel so you can get more professional content like this. Um, then head on over to fantasysixpack.net slash plans, become an all access member over there. And then you can hit us up in our discord channel. We can answer your questions that are directly customized to your fantasy leagues. Um, but anything else you want to add today, Dylan? No, Jordan, I think we're good, man. It was good. Uh, good talking with you today. Yes, sir. We'll talk we'll be back for wide receivers next time.